With over 140 handcrafted tiles made by students, faculty, and community members, the Arboretum and Public Garden Nature's Gallery Court is truly a gem. The mosaic mural is located in the west end of the Arboretum off of Garrett Drive. The tiles feature diverse, drought-tolerant plants or insects that can be found in the Ruth Risden Storer Garden. This unique, high-profile project showcases the talents of the artists, students, community members, and educators involved in its creation and the generosity and support of our benefactors. Before permanent installation in its home on campus in 2012, the mural was featured at the U.S. Botanic Garden in Washington, D.C. I interviewed the powerhouses behind this stunning community project and learned the full story of how the Nature's Gallery Court came to be. My name is Diane Ullman. I am a professor of entomology um, in the Department of Entomology and Nematology. And um, I teach a class called Entomology One, which is art, science, and the world of insects, as well as a number of other classes. And I also do a lot of research. This is our little kiln. This nice. is the kiln that all the pieces for Nature's Gallery Court were made in. Wow. And we made that whole project in eight weeks. Oh my God, that's incredible. Yeah, this kiln ran almost continuously. In 1996, I founded the Art Science Fusion Program along with Donna Billick. Uh, my name is Donna Billick, and I am the co-founder, along with Dr. Diane Allman, of the Art Science Fusion Program. Um, Donna and I were both interested in the intersections between art and science. so. Um, we started working together in the teaching of Entomology 1, where we would connect art and science in teaching insect biology. Um, this fusion program arose out of an interest that I had in how people learn. And I was realizing, uh, actually as I was doing a project with Donna Billick, and um, as I was making the pieces, I was just amazed at how much I was learning about insect biology. And I'm an entomologist. So I felt like, wow, if, if I can learn something from this, imagine this as a teaching tool. We wanted nature to do the talking and we wanted students to collaborate. Pretty much all of the elements of uh, classic um, education were turned upside down. The students collaborated, they assisted each other, and they did a lot of the, um, the, the speaking or the instruction. It just worked better than, than we could have imagined. Coincidentally, I am one of the lucky individuals that gets to take Dr. Diane Ullman's Entomology 1 class this quarter. And in that class, we each get assigned an insect. Mine is the bombardier beetle. And we have to research about that insect and learn its history, um, how it's evolved and adapted, and its distinguishing features, and incorporate those ideas to create a design that can be screen printed. These designs that we create are then screen printed onto tiles, which will be hung on UC Davis's campus and the students loved it, we loved doing it. Um, it became really clear that this could apply to a lot of different topics. For me, the class has been an amazing experience. I think that it really makes sense to bring these two worlds, art and science together, and the result is very creative and I found that I learned a lot as someone who's more artistic. Um, it helped me to learn more about science and I think it like makes it a lot less intimidating and approachable. In 2005, Diane and Donna's innovative program caught the attention of Provost Virginia Henshaw who needed their artistic touch. Hi, my name is Kathleen Sokolowski. I'm the director of the UC Davis Arboretum Public Garden and an assistant vice chancellor in campus planning at UC Davis. 
provost saw our strategic plan where we had no bathroom in the arboretum. And so she decided to give us money for a bathroom and, and it was a terrible, just slab type building thing, you know, and we, we were like, we got to do something to make this better. And, our, and she said, well, I wonder if you could you know, do one of your mosaics with your students on the side of it and it wouldn't look quite so out of place amongst all these majestic oak trees. So we put a mosaic on the front of the, that building and people just just loved it. And it's actually that mosaic that led to the building of Nature's Gallery Court. Hello, my name is Carmia Feldman and I am an assistant director at the UC Davis Arboretum and Public Garden. Our national and international um, public garden professional organization is called the American Public Gardens Association. And um, at the time, so in 2006, the, um, they were planning for the national meeting, the conference was going to be in Washington, D.C. And they wanted to do something very special for the, the conference being in the nation's capital. Mm -hmm. And so they decided to do an exhibit in the U.S. Botanic Garden that would feature innovative work that public gardens are doing across the world. And I don't even remember how I ended up on that committee, but somehow I, I did. I was on that committee and we were, you know, just thinking of, you know, which gardens are doing really cool stuff. Um, that could be showcased in Washington, D.C. And I was thinking, well, we're doing this really cool thing, innovative thing with Art Science Fusion. And so I proposed that to the committee and they loved the idea. And then, you know, it went from there talking to Diane and Donna about, you know, what could we do? That was um, when Carmia came and told us that that um, the American Public Garden Association wanted us to do that and that we were being offered this wall in the First Lady's Garden. I mean, I really had to sit down quickly. <laughs> you know, I, it, I just couldn't believe my ears. And even for an old pro like uh, Donna, who'd done lots of big commissions in different places, she was just stunned at first. I mean, you know, things like that don't just drop into your lap very often. And we had done the um, mosaic tile art and we talked to the U.S. Botanic Garden because they have a curved wall in the First Lady's Garden, mm -hmm. at the Botanic Garden. Uh, when I saw the wall, it seemed daunting for me to, it's like levitate that work up there without making a mark. Mm -hmm. It was something close to that. And so uh, Donna was, you know, Donna figured out it was this whole mathematical thing about how oh my gosh. install it on this curved wall. Um, and without making any damage to the wall, no yeah. permanent damage. Oh. Right, because it couldn't be permanent. So she had to figure out how to make a scaffold that would go on the wall and could hold this multi-ton art piece. With these uh, four design strips that were inlaid into that curvilinear wall. And I saw that as an opportunity to take a couple of wooden cleats, sort of triangle shape, and then wedge them in there. So then uh, they set to work with the students um, and inviting community members. Yes, it's always fascinating to me that neither one of us felt scared at all. Like looking back on it, why weren't we worried? I, I've never met anyone like Donna who could command that many people to do this giant community development that she's an artist who, I mean, it's just, really amazing. She's a force of nature, and so is Diane. The first day of class, Diane is always very supportive and and and, and honey-baked, but I'm pretty much right to the jugular. I said, you know, you might live to be 80 years old, 90 years old. I 
My guess is you will never be offered a site at the Smithsonian. Diane and Donna decided the Ruth Risden Storer Garden served as the perfect inspiration for the project. They had each student design a tile featuring a flower or shrub from the garden that is especially well suited to Central Valley conditions. The uh, idea was to have the students go out and select a plant just because they liked the way it smelled or looked or um, something about it they had affinity for and then they did the research and then they came back with uh, images and what you see uh, in the panels that are now permanently installed at UC Davis is the result of that experiment. Um, students and community members put in a lot of extra hours to finish their projects. Everyone came in and put together their mosaics. We got to go into the Labudio with the students. We all made them. <laughs> we all made tiles um, and I was so impressed with how easy uh, Diana and Donna made it for people who you know don't feel comfortable with art necessarily to create something so beautiful. And then the whole community came to help load it into boxes. Made it happen. It was incredible. We got to go to DC for the conference. It was wild. I think I have some photographs of that. You know, it was 100 degrees and 100% humidity. And so we were like putting wet towels on our heads and all kinds of things, but we, we got it done. I think it took us three or four days. We got it all installed and it just looked amazing. And uh, in the days before, we had um, a donor reception and Mike Thompson, our congressperson, I think he's hosted the reception. Yes. Is that right? He hosted the reception and we had uh, some, some of our donors there, some UC Davis people who are in Washington, DC. It was, it was just incredible. that thing go up it was like a total drop draw of like because we had never really seen it we saw individual panels but the thing having to hold itself up there having it fit uh, was uh, pretty exciting pretty exciting to be able to see uh, that amount of energy, that amount of commitment to learning, that amount of intention, that amount of uh, bubble wrap. <laughs> we were there for the opening of this exhibit. Um, you know, hundreds of thousands of people got to see this over the course of the summer. It was incredible. And um, we heard from the people at the U.S. Botanic Garden that they really, really wanted to keep this mural. Mm -hmm. They loved the mural. They wanted to keep it, but because they are um, part of Congress, their uh, Congress um, oversees the U.S. Botanic Garden, they're not allowed to favor any one state. And we did, re when we removed it, which was 10 months later, not one mark on that wall. So we, we did it. <laughs> And then our challenge was, what do we do with it? And we couldn't, we couldn't just put it on a, a flat wall because it had been made specifically for this curved wall in the First Lady's Garden. And so we actually uh, had a design made of an exact replica of that curved wall and created Nature's Gallery Court in the Arboretum. and Don and Diane and 
Carmi and me, we came up with that design and then we found out what the cost was and we raised money. And we raised money primarily through selling the dedications to the, the tiles. So we were at every college event. We diligently brought all those pieces of the students' work to the community and they saw the beauty of the vision. So it was very touching. People were, were dedicating these in honor of family members. Then we had the dedication for the event and um, we had beautiful, well, we had previews and it, it was just amazing how much work we did getting people connected to it. But it was a beautiful celebration and it was just a very wonderful experience for us on all levels and it continues to um, continues to inspire people so from I think Carmi and I were excited about the educational side of it you know all that everyone learned in this but that the fact that the education and the interest in it continues is, is very exciting. The Nature's Gallery Court has inspired many and most recently, it caught the attention of a second grade class in Connecticut who made their own music mural with a twist. My name is Susie Grimes and I'm an associate teacher. I work with three other teachers at the Foot School in the second grade. The last two years, we've been working on sustainability and, you know, trying to decrease our trash and watching what we put in our lunches, using reusable uh, containers and trying not to use plastic bags. We also have teamed up with the Columbus House, which is a, um, a, um, a house that helps the homeless. And in order to decorate their walls, we did a winter mural for them and had they hung it in their dining room and for the spring we decided we'd wanted to do a um, floral mural to bring spring into their place um, so we decided to com combine the sustainability by using recycled trash and so we collected um, clean trash the kids were told they could bring in boxes, bags, whatever they had at home that was clean. And they didn't know what they were gonna use it for. The way we found your wall was, I just did a search, a Google search, and I can't even remember what I put in, whether it was um, floral mural or flower wall. But anyway, I found your wall. Well, the kids were so inspired by their wall so it was we have I guess we have we both are inspired by each other <laughs> every time I go there I just feel so happy and grateful uh, to have had that opportunity and to have created something on that level and to have engaged so many different people because it's it, it was an absolute example of what happens when you have good collaboration it's a monumental piece of my life is time and uh, collaboration with with dr Ullman. she's amazing and uh we always were there for each other we totally were there for each other I would never have her walk in without arms full of what it is she said she'd bring. And it's the same for me. Well, I, I think the legacy of Nature's Gallery Court, it's really showcasing this amazing moment in time of this beautiful collaboration between the Art Science Fusion Program and the Arboretum and Public Garden and showing you know, what the creativity can create you know, what we can do with the passion of students and community members to take 
you know, the beauty of nature and make it accessible to people, make it really something that people can enjoy on so many levels and hopefully inspire them to learn more, <clears throat> to believe that they can create something so beautiful, but also that there is um, something that they can learn from nature and the relationships between plants and insects and other organisms and humans. Um, so I really think that this is going to have that lasting legacy and, and you know, generations to come are gonna really enjoy Nature's Gallery Court and all the other um, art science fusion pieces in the Arbory. So I think it's a legacy for each student individually, personally, to walk up to and go, heck yeah, I made that piece. They can walk right over it with pride and say, that, that's the piece that I worked on. So that's what I'm hoping is just that it's a lifelong learning, living classroom. It's open 24 seven. Uh, I don't like uh, particularly an elitist point of view. Uh, you know, museums and galleries don't touch and, and you can only come in if you, uh, you know, pay a ticket. Well, Nature's Gallery Court is open 24-7. So you can enjoy what's created by the art science fusion students there. Uh, way past when you and I are long gone. Very loved place. And I think it's a good example of place making. You know, people talk about about place making and, and communities having a sense of place. Nature's Gallery Court is the absolute best example of that that I can think of.